Well, hello, everybody. I am your DM this evening. My name is John Hari. Welcome to another exciting round of playing games with strangers. We are still playing with a shortened staff this week. Uh, Josiah is not here. He had some personal stuff going on. Uh, and just for a little peek behind the curtains, that means two episode, two more episodes without him. So it's going to be a month without a uh, month without the poo. But that's all right. No poo for a month. That can't be healthy. That sounds. Uh, painful. I hear. I hear people can get grumpy if they don't have poo for a month. But such is life, and these are the cards we have been dealt. So while the show gets fiberized, I will introduce the rest of the cast. Uh, we have to the right of my square on my screen. We have Squid, Catherine Zerwinski. What's up? What's up? Next What's to her. That? Next to her, we have Dave, the goodest boy. Ah, happy session Friday. Yes. Underneath Dave, we have Eric Campagno, the stumbliest of all the stumblefoots. I fall a lot. (laughs) Uh, To the left of him, we have the king, the legend, the man, the myth, J.S. Earls. My boss and yours. <laughs> You're fired. Like you did. <laughs> who, who do you think you are, Kate? I can join you. Uh, great. I resemble that remark. Great this podcast audio, is everybody. Going to become an ASMR podcast and where we all just finally, put pens. Last and but definitely not least, we have the artificial ginger. Celeste Mora. Uh, my husband likes to call me the sometimes ginger. The sometimes ginger. Because he never knows what he's going to come home to. So anyway, goofiness aside, let's go ahead and roll the theme song and we'll get into tonight's, get to tonight's game of playing games with strangers. <laughs> Who wants to recap the last session? Wilder. Good recap, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Wilder. Uh, yeah. Orbog got Wilder. high and we saw the Holy Ghost. Orbog did get high. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that's a big part. Yeah, Wilder ran into Carry his on. past Carry on, two times over. Um, uh, the... The crew traveled to Daggerford to uh, rescue Aileen and put her back in her body. And Orbog got super high, saw the Holy Spirit. Um, They went back to the Yawning Portal. And uh, Wilder had a, a, a scary dream where, you know, maybe he actually killed his mentor, Fenric Coldwater. The end. Quotes around the Wilder word dream. That, that, that sums it up. Yeah. <clears throat> Funny thing about those dreams, when they're real, sometimes they're memories. <laughs> Wilder, you wake up from your dream. And it is in the middle of it is s- still dark outside. And you hear rummaging coming from downstairs. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drag myself out of bed uh, just to kind of peek out the door. Look downstairs. Um you peek out the door and you look downstairs and you can see some definite like candlelight, you know, flickering light coming from downstairs and there is some rummaging and then like it's almost like someone's messing around with pans or pots lots of clatter like noises you're not used to hearing this late at night Hmm. 
who would you say is the room closest to me? I don't know. Roll a die. Would you say that from downstairs there arose such a clatter and Wilder got up to see what was the matter? Well, that's essentially the scene I just set before him. But I mean, oh, if you no. want. Wilder's is it close to Christmas? Christmas? It is well, not. I was going to go with Pooh and his kerchief, but he's not here. Yeah, actually, in fact, Pooh's door is the closest one towards you. Uh, so I knock politely, like I do. All right, you, you open the door and you see Pooh there. Um. Okay, hey, Pooh. Um. Do you have friends down here? Mm, no. Oh. Um. Never mind. I. Do you want to come with me and check out this sound? Uh-huh. Was that a yes, hmm, or a no, hmm? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's go, big guy. And uh, Pooh and I walk downstairs. All right. So you head. You both head downstairs. And you hear rustling. Co- the the noise is coming from the kitchen, but spread out across countertops and the tables you see just pans of bread cinnamon rolls pie just all kind of all kinds of baked goods turn in turn in no response oh oh I don't know if you just asked me if you could stay down here and eat this yourself, but good luck with your mouth sealed shut. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look around the the rest of the tavern to see if there's anything that stands out as even stranger than a bunch of baked goods. Smells wonderful. Uh, you know, that bakery smell, like when you go to the grocery store early in the morning and the bakery's fired up and making, making bread. But yeah, it just baked goods says on every surface that you can put stuff on. I'm going to wander back into the kitchen. You wander into the kitchen and you see Aileen just whirling like a dervish throughout this kitchen. Uh, Aileen, uh, having trouble sleeping? Good morning. Is it morning? There's some food out there if you want some. I saw that. Um, no, I'd actually like to get back to bed. Uh, Well, don't let me keep you. What are you doing? Why are you baking at such a strange time? Well, it's really not that strange of a time, is it? I mean, is it ever a bad time to bake? I don't really bake, so I, I I don't know. I mean, is this normal for you? I, I mean, not necessarily, but you know, when the urge hits you. Right. Um, so I think I have some sourdough loaves in that oven. I have some cookies in that oven. I believe I have a cobbler in that's set up to ready to go here and a couple pies. Do you have a request? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of peanut butter pie. Okay, I'll get that going. Oh. oh, okay. Um, is there anything I can help you with? I mean, you want to go find the peanut butter. Oh. I'm just going to start cracking eggs into a bowl to make the the crust. Orbog, please make a perception check. And while you're doing that, uh, Stumblefoot, did you go back to Castle Waterdeep or are you staying at the uh, portal? Um, I decided to stay at the yawning portal with the group. All right, go ahead and make a perception sh- check as well. 17. Meanwhile, I am going to look for peanut butter. I think it's in Pooh's mouth. <laughs> Stumblefoot got a 14. All right, uh... You both are awakened to the delightful smells of freshly baked baking goods. About what time is it? 
Um, you would know it to be what would be our equivalent of three o'clock in the morning. Time to make the donut. Uh, Squid, do you have we determined if you smell still? <laughs> I mean, she's you told me I undead. breathe, so I assume that I smell. I mean, he's a. Corpse, I mean, I smell so bad. <laughs> I'm sure he probably smells. I... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I I saw that joke coming in the moment I finished that sentence. Um, go ahead and make a uh, perception check as well. Uh, seventeen. Yeah, you get awakened by the glorious smell of baked goods as well. Oh, you have been so exhausted for so long. Why? <laughs> Why this? Why? Uh, Dave, go ahead and make an investigation check. All right. Or sorry, Wilder, make the investigation check. I'll make it for Wilder. <laughs> uh, yeah, you find that you find an industrial size can of peanut butter. Uh, this is enough, right, Aileen? Oh yes, that should be fine, dear. All right. Just set it right there. I'll get to it in a second. Like pick it up and like heave it onto the table. The other three of you, what are what what you doing? I'll wander down. I've just accepted that I'll always be exhausted at this point. <laughs> I'm gonna roll over and go back to sleep. All right. Orbog. Do I have a hang? Do I do I have any lingering stuff? Bake over. The, uh... Got the munchies. Uh, you have a headache. That that much you know. I guess I will slowly walk towards the kitchen, thinking that maybe if I eat or drink something, it might help. All right. Uh, yeah. As you're as you're going that way, you, you kind of hear muted voices of Wilder and Aileen, and kind of the clanging of pots and pans being worked. And as you get down to the base of the stairs, you two are greeted to the sight of baked goods on every surface. As do you, Callum, because you said you were going to investigate as well. Hey, 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 Olbog. Um, good early morning. Um, I think Aileen's taking requests if uh, you want something, right? Good morning. Well, let us finish this peanut butter pie first. It oh, does have need do. to go into the ice box. That's a lot of, that's a lot of ice for late at night. Well, I mean, they're really for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's exactly... If I were making pies for a day, this is when I would make them. But what? what's tomorrow? Nothing. Do you need a reason for pies? I mean, generally, that's how it works, for me at least. Oh, that's um, sad. No, there is always a reason for pie. Oh. Zeus allergic. I don't, you know, it didn't come up in conversation. I don't know. <clears throat> Way to find out. Uh, Bye. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, well, I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep well, Callum. <laughs> that was the best. I'm sorry that <laughs> Squid. Right to you. You broke the DM. <laughs> Good. I'm glad that I could do it with just that one simple line. Very true. Callum goes back upstairs. <laughs> I think that deserves some inspiration. I already I have inspiration for the last time I broke the DM. I just haven't used it yet. So. Oh wow. Some have done a lot. Their inspiration. I don't. You know, I don't do too much. So. This is true. I'm gonna start. Uh, I'll start. I'll start eating something. Something. It's just handfuls. <laughs> just trying to roll to see what. It... Roll for gluttony. Uh... Roll for sticky rolls. Uh... Yeah. Um. What? What? I will. I, okay. If she made cupcakes, I'm not. I have bad memories of cupcakes, so I'll, I'll do anything but the cupcakes. <laughs> All right. Uh. Yeah. You start. You start pounding. Uh. You start pounding this uh, lemon meringue pie, pound cake, <laughs> and and some uh, frosted sugar cookies, 
and oh, unicorn sugar cookies. Let's. And uh, y- y- your headache is starting to feel a little bit better now that you're getting your uh, blood sugar back up a bit. Yeah, now that a bit? yeah, this is great. I mean, since I'm diabetic, now I'm getting to live vicariously. <laughs> <laughs> All the things. That's this is what D and D can do for you. You know, <laughs> let you eat sugar. This is just achieving dreams. So time, the, the morning goes by, uh, swiftly, uh, from uh, the room adjacent to the kitchen, you hear a thump and I've got mail. Uh, someone has made a Dernan, deposit at the bank. <laughs> Dernan, uh, walks out of that room and looks out and what the crap is going on? Good morning, Dunn, and I thought I'd uh, make myself busy. You know, idle hands and all that mess. I think I've been hanging around Aunt Tilda a little too long, but we have cakes, we have pies, we have cupcakes, we have cookies, we have uh, custard, we have a peanut butter pie in the fridge, we have, uh, what else do we have? I don't remember. That was just what I made coffee? after three. Oh yes, I drank all that. Let me make you some more. Right. Turned it into a barakery. A uh, what? He's combining the words bar and bakery. Keep up. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Stumblefoot comes down and says, Wouldn't that be more like a barkery? Well, that sounds like there's dogs involved. So. Yeah, I'm, I no. think that's what they call the dog kennel down the street. And he looks over at you, Orbog, and you've got several empty pans just strewn around you, and you've got the your top button on your pants un, just slightly unbuttoned and your gut hanging over. He's like, um, you look like you've been busy all night, too. <laughs> it looks like we have two people here who process their feelings in very different ways. He eats them, and she yep. bakes them. You can do that. Oh, hey. Of course, oh, lad. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. But coffee would be good. So, what's the agenda for today? What were we planning on doing when we went to bed last night? Or when y'all went to bed? Did we Aileen, did you not sleep at all the night prior? No, dear. I baked. <laughs> all right. Go ahead and t- you're going to have one point of exhaustion. Welcome to the club. It's a good clap to be in. Actually, you, by my count, Squid, you should be out of exhaustion I'm because you I went back to bed. Yes. Now, had I stayed up, though, got some Zeus. I mean, Z. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, did we have a plan before we went to bed, or was it just kind of go to sleep and hope? That it's all fixed in the morning. That doesn't seem very practical. I don't know that we had a plan. Orbog, make a perception check, please. Aileen's gonna pass Callum coffee. While she's sipping her own. Thank you. I will put sugar in it because I'm a baby. No, 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 dear. Just take the frosting. Don't put it. It's pretty you can, you can put it. You should dip. You should dip one of There's your cookies in There's a cake over there that I made whipped frosting. It's whipped cream. You should try that one too. That's. I, mean, I haven't had anything in a while. Orbog, uh, you know, in your haze of gluttony and the slight headache that you have remaining, when when Callum comes down the stairs and you look over towards him, you notice a. Uh, a slight silhouette coming off of his back, very familiar to the one that you saw when you were full on under that uh, potion that you drank uh, that looks like a giant shadow creature um, coming out of his spine and riding her using his hands like marionette strings to control him. Well, Orbog is going 
not thinking and he's slowly opening his mouth and some of the food is <laughs> falling out. And he's trying not to stare at Callum. But he kind of is. Callum and I are over and here. He's, he's just going like, to hold his he's, coffee he's halfway to his mouth. And did I? <laughs> what? Did I? Is there something? Did I drop? What? 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 We have back problems. I have a lot of problems. Why you got to point out that one? I just... Can I see your back? I don't know. Can you? If you turn around, I can. Oh, Bog, don't be weird. Do you, Do you want me to turn around? Cake? You want to look at the back of my, my body? Have you met Orbog? True. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm hesitant to turn around and show my back. Well, it's just while there was telling him not to be weird. That's like telling Pooh not to be reckless. Well, yeah, that's right. Well, right. I'll stand up and turn around. <laughs> Do I see anything? Yeah, it turns. It turns itself 180 degrees, and it's looking directly at you. As you are looking at it. Eh. Oh, look! It's a back. So I'm the only one seeing it? Yes. Unless I had a mirror. Black shadow person coming out of the back. Black shadow person coming out of the back. What? As, I'm bugged. Okay. I'll turn, I'll turn pointing back Pointing at, at her back. Okay. As you say this, uh, Callum, yeah. you feel a horrendous pain across your back as Orbog sees it raking its fingers down his back. Um, to everybody else, it just looks like slashes appearing in Callum's back. Uh, and Callum, you will take... Oh, oh, oh no. I was going to yell, but I won't injure everyone's ears. But... Ah! <laughs> That's my real deck. How'd that sheep get in here? You take <laughs> Callum. You take 23 yeah. points of necrotic damage. Oh! Lords. Oh, all the gods here in so, the Forgotten Realms. So, 23, yeah. you said? Yes. How much so, more dead can he be? It, so it, it basically flays his back open as you say I'm, this. I am just going to drop Stumblefoot, to the ground. Stumblefoot is oh, going to cast sorry. protection from evil on Callum. And Wilder is running up to Callum. Aileen's going to go get the first aid kit. Callum's falling on the ground. Yeah, I just. Okay, so as. As uh, Stumblefoot is starting to cast his spell, what's the cast time on protection of good and evil? One action, so six okay. seconds. So as he's starting to talk, Orbog, what you see. Actually, what everybody else sees first of all is you someone one of you watches the deepest gash get open wider or bug you watch as this as this shadow entity pulls it open is, and is trying to crawl inside um what's what's the protection of good and evil do eric for our listeners until the spell ends, one willing creature I touch is protected against certain types of creatures, aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Okay. Here's a question. If I look over my shoulder, can I see it? You cannot. No. Even, and then, even with Even with spinning around trying to look Even with it. my eyes. So the protection grants several benefits. Creatures of those types have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. The target, in this case Callum, also cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed by such a creature, the target has advantage on any new saving throw against the relevant effect. Okay. Um, I tried this one before. Callum, mm -hmm. make a saving throw. Make a just general. Point. I believe that would this be what would will be a will based saving throw? It'd either be wisdom or Killer. charisma. Uh, let's call this one a charisma saving throw. Do we have to? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. But you have advantage. 
I do have advantage. Green lantern. Now, ring. here's a question. If I already have advantage and I burn inspiration, do I get to roll again? Does inspiration give you advantage? Is that what it does? I'm trying to remember. Yes, unless it's bardic and then it's a D, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll allow that being as you've had inspiration forever. That's good, because I got a two and a five, so <laughs> let's give it another go. All right, well, that was a three, so <laughs> that's uh, par for the course. That makes sense for me. Yeah, so you fire off the spell. There is an unearthly yeah! shriek that everybody can hear, but Orbog, you watch the thing climb into Callum. Okay, Callum took damage. Mm-hmm. A bit. wounds. A little bit. Where'd you get those crappy dice? Yeah, I got them from Sage's portal. <laughs> you guys should all... You guys should all go get some Sage's portal dice. They do so good in a game. <laughs> just a minute. I need to get up off the ground uh -huh. after the bus just ran me yeah, over. <laughs> so do I, because I just took half my health in damage well, that's and then why I'm failed using a level two level two spell slot on you <laughs> failed you. three rolls squids using a special five. set that are all negative dice yeah, that's what it is uh-huh <laughs> so, so yeah go get you some of the red cracked metal dice they're so good i've never seen that number in a game never not once all right let's see here um, you're gonna get a bunch back because I'm a life cleric. So that is so lovely. I'm not alive. So, how does but that you factor? Still in? Yeah. You still get healed. Yes. Get all the lights. Yeah. So you're gonna get, um, so you get 19 hit points back. I think it was more than what you took. No, I took 20-something. Okay. Well, you get back 19. So Durnan's looking around. He's like, now there's random stigmata and blood on the floor and unearthly shrieking. He's like, okay, someone needs to tell me what exactly is going on here because this was not the day I was planning to have at work. I'm just Ooh, tell him. Who looks over and thinks about it for a second and then starts using his hands and says, So, Darnan, it appears that Callum has a hitchhiker of the, um, shall we say, fiendish nature. <gasps> and, um, uh, we've been trying to keep it on the down low because we didn't want it to know that we knew it was there. Remember, Orbog? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Down low. Because we didn't want it to hurt Callum until we could figure out how to get rid of it. This is the first time Callum's heard anything of this sort. <laughs> Yeah, right, because we didn't want to tell Surprise! Callum. We couldn't tell Callum because then we'd be telling the beastie now, wouldn't we? I... Do I have to go to my room now? No, you are gonna have to go to your room. So you knew it was there? Aye, I've known for a while it was there, but I've been trying to figure out how to help you and get rid of it, but I, kinda, I could not tell you. And I was instructed not to let it know that we know that it was there. And telling you, obviously, would clue it in. And so he told Orbog. I didn't tell Orbog. Orbog seed it. So, don't worry. We won't tell you again. It's not an it. Do what you is know it, then? what it is? Him, I assume. Oh, the... The fellow whose name starts with a Z. Well, I'm not the best speller, but yeah. <sighs> Is it gone? Stolf was going to stare pointedly in poo and say, It looks like your bargain was for naught. Right, what he said. Did you get it to leave? 
No, I didn't get it to leave. I tried, but uh, it didn't work this time. We try again later. Well, it sounds like we have our plan for the day. Does anybody want a croissant? <laughs> Y'all have some great lines going on today. <laughs> Um, a crucifix croissant? No, just a, a regular croissant. I do have some with almonds on the top over there. Could could we maybe get some bandages? And uh, Callum, you just want to take a rest? No, not really. All right, never mind then. I'm going to go back into the kitchen and check on my pie. <laughs> Still in the fridge. See if it's Are you... Are you alone in the kitchen, or is Aileen going back too, or? No, I was going behind the bar to get the, the bandages. Okay. Wilder, as you go into mm -hmm. the kitchen to check on your pie, you hear a loud thump against the window in the kitchen. Turn to look toward the window. You see... And this is much different than the hallucinations you were having in the last session. You, but you, you do see a very corpse-like looking Fen Fenwick standing at the window with some. His eyes are glazed over and looked ca fairly cataract. And you just hear him go, "My boy." I mean, like glazed donut. No, like what a cataract would look like when it yeah, went, the, the smoky, too. glazed over look that they have. I like my description. <laughs> yeah, I drop the pie that is in my hands onto the uh, floor. Aileen, you hear a, the, cl the familiar clatter of dropped pastries in the kitchen. Do we all hear it? You can if you want to. But Wilder, Aileen, are you okay? Aileen would know exactly what it was. You guys just hear a clatter in the kitchen. Wilder. I'm going to go into the kitchen. At, as you drop your pie, Wilder, it sham he shambles off. Aileen, you come in the kitchen. You see, you know, how how visible, Wilder, Wilder, are you with your reaction other than dropping the pie? Oh, yeah. You, you absolutely know something is wrong. I am pale. And shaking even more than just having the DTs. Although that doesn't help. Right. Um, Wilder, are you okay? No. No. Here, um, have a seat. I'm going to pull up a stool so you can have a seat. I, I, I can't sit down right now. Um. I'm oh, just going to shove the stool at you. <laughs> Leave me alone. And I'm going to push past Aileen and attempt to walk upstairs back to my room. Oh, no, sir. You dropped a pie that we spent hours on. You're going to tell me what's going on. And I'll grab his sleeve. You haven't been here, so you don't understand. Just leave me alone. Why don't you inform me? I've... I've been seeing my dead mentor for the last day and I saw him again and he looked more dead this time than he ever did before and it's complicated and I don't want to talk about it. Okay, that's fine. We know we have a dead mentor running around. We got that, but I don't think you should be alone. Maybe not. So, here, take one of these, these crawlers out, out there, give it to Orbog, because you know he's going to want one. Have a seat, and keep where we can see you, because you might be hallucinating because you've stopped drinking. No, this, this, was, this was different. Uh, well, it's certainly not helping, I get. All right. I'm going to clean I, up this pie. I grabbed two crawlers. And head out to the table and toss one There's to Orbog. Plenty. Wilder comes out and throws a donut at you, uh, Orbog. And like, 
throws it, not just toss it. Here, buddy, here you go. Like I literally throw it. Full on pitch it straight at his face. I catch it without even looking. (laughs) I feel like you have to roll for that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give you do that. Uh, If you're gonna catch it, if you're gonna do a no look catch, I'm gonna have to ask you to do a dexterity save. Problem. Dexterity's Orbog's middle name. Yeah. With that roll, it is. Oh, dirty oh, twenty. Oh, dirty twenty. Oh. So yeah, in a clutch maneuver, date uh, Wilder comes out there and just whips this crawler at Orbog's face, and Orbog just is talk like sitting there chatting with somebody and just throws his hand up, catches it, and just takes a bite out of it. Still not even looking at Wilder. <sighs> Nice one. Just- Throw a beignet at me next time. <laughs> Why don't you go get it yourself? I, actually, I'm I'm gonna be kind of moving towards some Stumblefoot to try to uh, speak quietly with him. So. That's Callum gonna be a problem because Callum's definitely gonna be sitting Hopefully. close to Stumblefoot. Orbog, <laughs> make another perception check, please. Oh goodness, they're all possessed, aren't they? This is the Halloween. Episode. No, it's not. <laughs> I wish we were. All right, you don't. Notice that at this time you're a little bit distracted by the crawler you have. I can't so I, I can't cautiously talk. To no, you can. You can try. But I, I was just saying if you noticed something and you didn't, so you, you can go about your business. No. Go about your business. Kellum's definitely sitting next to Stumblefoot, so good good luck. Well, I'm speaking pig Latin. Ooh, that's true. That's the one language I don't speak. Igpe <laughs> Adenle. Pretty sure we determined that that was dwarvish. We can speak Ong. <laughs> we could speak the Ong language. It just takes a really long time. Irong Ikong. Jango Hongnong. I'm gonna be. Wi- I'm going to try to whisper <laughs> to Stumblefoot. You think we could get um, the side shadow guy, whoever it is, if we put him in a crystal? Um, make a stealth check to determine how. Ah, dude, come on. I just caught a weapon thrown at me. That stealth and dexterity are very different things. Yeah, you're a very quiet fella. Uh, now, uh, Callum. Oh, boy. Callum, go ahead, <laughs> Callum, go ahead and my, make a perception check, please. My passive is 16, but I'm gonna roll, just because I trust these dice with my life. Get your own at Sage's Portal. <laughs> I feel like that was directed at me. Well, it was actually a 16, so I rolled my passive. You rolled your passive. Yeah, you heard every word of it. I'm going to look at Orbog, and I'm going to shrug and say, I don't know. I'm just looking between them, just waiting for more to come. I'm also going to look at Orbog and say, you know, Callum's right here next to me. Probably can hear us. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can. Unless you don't want me to hear, and then I'll just close my ears and look the other way. No, I don't want to see your back anymore. Great. I didn't like it last time that you did, so... I also don't want that. I don't know what the right answer is here. I don't have the answer. I'm just... Well, I'm just wondering something that would turn this against him. I would prefer you not turn anything against me. If I if, if I have a say. Not you. 
I think it meant uh, your hitchhiker, not you. Not Mr. K or Mr. Z. From what I understand, that's Mr. Z. I'm just saying, I think... I don't know. I think we've been a... I don't know if afraid is the right word. But... Well, we need to do something, but the problem is I'm not sure where to start. But as soon as we've got a direction, I'll head there full steam ahead. What if we just, you know, leave Waterdeep? Just as an <laughs> it's not going to serve. Leaving Waterdeep's not going to solve your problem. Yeah, but you know, yeah, seeing as how us is who he wants, we could leave and then it would be fine. And then he wouldn't have what he wanted. So... Well, from what I understand, he he wanted one of the parties that we're uh, we're up against wanted Aileen in empty vessel mode, and we've already thwarted that by restoring her soul, even though we did it the wrong way. Allegedly. Um, So that's one problem solved, but now we've got a bigger, well, I I don't know if it's a bigger problem, but we've got an additional problem and that's getting you, um, you know, uh, you've got an extra personality that I don't think is healthy. Yeah, I've heard that. Right. Uh, And it's, it's not the one I'm talking to right now. Well, that's the first time I've heard that, but yeah. <laughs> I I just know that I would prefer not to be here personally. Well, can we go to the church or somewhere else? I... Where people might be able to help. Maybe we could try. I, I don't know if that's going to fix the problem. I'm not super comfortable with the idea of going to the church, but I don't I don't know if that's me or or not me. You know Well, we cannot force you to go. Um but that thing that's in you is dark and evil. And if there's one place where we might be able to get rid of it, it would be at the church. Yeah. I'm I'm just not so sure that I'm not the same way. Well, all I know is I don't have all the answers. This is very encouraging. Thank you. I don't know. I'm out of my element here. I... Do you know who would be really helpful right now? I was just, I was the mayor two days ago. Thank you. Just, there's, I feel like there's just a dragonborn that'd be so helpful in this moment right now. But, you know, <laughs> that's fine. Uh yeah i don't i don't know what i'm doing and you don't know what you're doing and clearly orbog doesn't know what he's doing uh so i yeah well you know if you want to prove i've got a pretty good clue what i'm doing most of the time it's just in regard to your situation i don't know what i'm doing orbog here i'm pretty sure that most of the time he doesn't know what he's doing yeah what are we doing exactly well See, the thing is that I also don't know what I'm doing in my situation, so that's not helpful for me at all. And it's kind of terrifying, uh, given that I have to keep living it. So, Understood. So let's try to stop it. Let's go to the church. I think we need to go and we need to find some answers somewhere. Aileen's going to come uh, out the of church the church. The church may be as good a place as any to start. Right at this moment, the door opens up. And a familiar looking soldier, soldier looking guy walks in. Um, I believe Orbog, Wilder, and Aileen would know who this individual is. His name is Ronnie. He, he was in that cell. He was being held in that cell. You guys released him and got him to join the uh, Defiance. Well, hello. How are you? We haven't seen you in a hot minute, have we? Well, hello there. Um, I, uh, 
I was uh, looking for Dernan. And Dernan's like, oh, I'm right here. And he goes up to Dernan and then they, they kind of go off into a corner and start speaking in hushed tones. What language is that? What? Hushed tones. What language is that? Anyway. Um, <laughs> and uh, they just go, Doo. he goes, and then Dernan looks at him. He goes, well, thanks, Ronnie, for letting me know. Uh, he, he flips him a platinum. Ronnie kind of nods Can at him. Can we hear and, what they were saying in their hushed tones? Um, Because I'm nosy. <laughs> I speak a stone. Uh, what languages do you speak, Squid? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm observant. Can I try to read their lips? Uh, celestial, common, goblin, halfling, and elvish. Um, are the subtitles on? Uh, make yeah. Go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, both of you who asked about it. I have the observant feet. It says if I can see a creature's mouth while it is speaking a language I understand, I can interpret what it's saying by reading its lips. Uh, what language? I is... love Sage's portal. What languages do you speak, uh, Stumblefoot? Common and Dwarvish. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, based off of uh, what you saw, it was in a language you're not familiar with. Okay. <laughs> um, what did you roll? Squid. Go to Sage's portal. Get your dices. The door is rolled natural. One. Yeah, you couldn't hear him either. Uh-huh. You you need to gigax your dice. <laughs> I need a dice jail. Do you sell those? Not yet. Should. Um, anybody else want to roll on eavesdropping and otherwise being a general person? My, my passive is 16, person? though, so if 16 works. Yeah, I will do. What do I roll? Uh, Perception. Wait, what languages do you speak, Orbog? Uh, all the languages. That's a lie. Um, Pig Latin. Pig Latin. Common, giant, and orc. No, you wouldn't understand them anyway. I'm I'm pretty, like, I'm a big, big fan of goblins. You still wouldn't understand it anyway. You read that book. I, I have a photographic memory. So, yeah. So Ronnie turns around and, and jogs out, jogs out of the uh, establishment. And uh, Dernan's got a pretty, a pretty solemn look on his face. Join the party. Everything yeah, okay, Dernan? Um, I don't know. The bugbears are going to war. Well, that's not good. With who? Apparently there's another tribe to the north that uh, has oh. taken a threatening stance. Yeah, that's probably the rest of the Sunders. You know, well, with, you know, with Caius and him being dead. Oh, <laughs> What? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, fool. That's probably what it was. Well, that's just, a mess. I just stand next to Pooh and look at everyone like they should understand what just happened. Why would the Bulgar tribe... Uh, I didn't think there were any more Sanders left. Pooh starts slapping the table and gesturing like for something to write with. I hand him a pen. Do you know he how starts writing on? He starts writing on the table. I have paper, but all right, okay. <laughs> um... And he wrote, Caius had bites taken out of him. Ah, it's exactly like Pooh told me just then when you weren't listening to him. It was the Bulgar tribe that went well, after Caius. That's true. I did see that bugbear and it did have bites taken out of it. Like bugbear bites or so some other. I, I no. like bugbear size oh, bites. I feel, like, I feel really sympathetic about this. Sorry, Pooh. But also, like, you know, the bigger problem it, like, bugbears have always solved their own problems you know they're very good at it figuring it out on well, their own um we're not good at figuring like, out our problems so sounds like Pooh has to make a decision he writes on the table 
bugbears don't eat other bugbears. If they're really hungry. Yeah, she would like if you. But do you bite each other when you're fighting? No, not generally they don't. Mm -mm. Hmm. What he said. Well, it still sounds like Pooh has a decision to make. Which is what? If the Bulgar tribe is going after the Sanders tribe, and I believe Pooh is a Sanders, if I understand my history correctly, then Pooh either needs to figure out if he's going to stay with us, go and support the Bulgars, or run north to the Sanders. You know, going north wouldn't be the worst thing if we wanted to support him. Uh, Pooh was the champion of the Sanders. Actually, their champion warrior. So we could go support him. You know, it was kind of everyone's fault but mine because I was in jail. The Sanders got wiped out. So Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so are we going to try to defuse the situation or are we going to involve ourselves in a war that doesn't directly really involve any of us except for Pooh? And me, technically. Great. I was also part of the Sanders tribe, so, you know. Wait, do we think the bites were done by zombies? I don't know. I didn't do it. Open up. Ah. Uh... They were fairly large bites. Well, I still vote for the church or a magic chiropractor. Well, you did say I had a bad back, and I feel like chiropractors specialize in bad backs. Pooh, but... Pooh writes Dr. Nix in big letters on the table. Who I'm going to veto Nicks? that one. No, Dr. Nix. I'm going to Nix it. Guy. Um, so I just, I feel like going north would be a good thing because I also would like to go um, north at some point, just in general. Uh, also being out of Waterdeep would be good. And um, vacations really cleanse the let's, soul or let's something. Let's just so. keep a demon villain with us the whole time. You could try that praying thing, you know. Uh, been there, done that. Not you. How, how far, how far north are we talking? For the Sanders tribe, but, or where I'm looking to go, because two different things. Uh, the Sanders tribe. Oh, walking distance, depending on how you walk, I suppose. One day, two days. Red days, blue days. <laughs> A week, a month, uh, like the DM. I don't remember. It wasn't oh, that far, right? The forest that the bugbear that y'all's bugbears live in north of town is in the crypt garden. Um, based off of what Caius had said, uh, probably the sword mount towards the sword mountains would be where the Sanders are located at presently. A week. We're looking at a week. I like two days. No, we're looking at a week. Which is good because it shaves off about, you know, a week of a journey of a month long trick I, I would love to take. But we'll talk about that later. So. Okay. Well, if I'm going to do this, then I need to uh, take a leave of absence. I'll fill in. I'll fill in. I feel no. like that is a bad idea. No, no, no. You're going to go with us. I want to go to the church. I don't want to go to the war. You want to go to the church. I would like to take you to the church. Well, I'm, you know, not interested at the moment. <laughs> oh. Uh, not ready for that kind of commitment. I think he's worried that if he steps through the door, he's going to burst into flames or disintegrate or something like that. Uh, something silly. Probably yeah, all of us would do silly. that. Very silly. That would be oh terrifying. Oh yeah. So I'm silly. saying it's silly because I don't think that's going to happen. Have you ever been undead and tried to be around holy things? I can't say that I have. No. I don't suggest it. 
So, what do I you mean, want to do? We could swing by a church on the way out, I suppose, but I'm not, I don't, it's not ideal for me, personally. If you go to the church, I'll go to the war. The war is like secondary to what I want, but I support that. So, yeah, sure. Let's do that. Okay. See, so, Stumblefoot, I, then I made a leader, leadership decision there. So I think I could be like lieutenant mayor or something. I'm going to go to the door and open it. All right. Uh, wherever we're going, could we go? Please. As as you open the door, as you open the door, uh, Wilder, you hear a voice to the left of you as you open it. Look, address everybody in the crowd. You hear another, my boy. You have been listening to the Playing Games with Strangers podcast with the voices of John Haryu, Catherine Serwinski. Dave Clements, J.S. Earls, Celeste Mora, Josiah Crandall, Eric Campagno, and Steve MacDonald. The theme music was written and performed by Steve Arthur, used with permission. Find more of his music on Facebook or wherever you purchase music digitally. Please review this podcast wherever you download it from to help other podcasters find our podcast and join our community. And once again, thank you for listening.